Dumb Husky and His White Cat Shizun. Chapter 180. Shizun, why? For Chu Wanning, this was the first time that his palm and fingers had interlocked with Mo Rance. He felt that it was enough, this was plenty enough. Fortunately, Mo Ran didn't do anything more. Otherwise, he might just have been able to jump down a hundred feet into the air just to escape. This was good. For Mo Ran, this was not the first time he had pressed his palm and interlocked his fingers with Chu Wanning. He felt that it was not enough, that it was too little. Unfortunately, he couldn't do anything more. Otherwise, he would have wanted to hold him in his arm and kiss him and then ask for more. He wanted to know the taste of him. This is bad. Even so, Mo Ran could sense that Chu Wanning was on the verge of running away. As soon as they landed on the ground, Chu Wanning turned around and ran without a second word. After running two steps, he felt his steps had been too fast and he immediately slowed down. He had only taken two slowed down steps when he heard that Mo Ran was following behind him. Feeling embarrassed and anxious, he quickly started to walk fast again. Mo Ran watched him stride forward, his heart itching and aching, warm and tender. Then he noticed that Chu Wanning was briskly walking towards a big tree. Mo Ran immediately warned, be careful. Bam. Unfortunately, Chu Wanning still hit the tree. He hurried over to him and asked, does it hurt? Let me see. Chu Wanning covered his forehead and did not say a word. After a while, he started to walk forward again. Mo Ran wanted to follow after him but he heard him say, don't follow me. I. I need to go back and rest. Stay outside first and get some air. After you've cooled down, then you can come in. To cool down? Mo Ran smiled. How could he cool down? I held your hand, Wanning, my heart is very warm. However, he still obeyed and did not continue to follow. He stood under the cold moonlight and watched Chu Wanning walk away until he disappeared behind the wall. Then, he walked up to the tree Chu Wanning had accidentally hit. After a while, he rested his forehead against the tree trunk. He closed his eyes. Chu Wanning. Likes him. Flying flowers and flowing water, an island-like spring. The bright moon hung high in the sky as clear clouds covered the sky. The tide was surging and the sky was brightening. No matter how good the world around him was, it could not compare to the fact that Chu Wanning liked him back. Even though he was lacking in words and talent, at this moment, his heart was filled with a surge of emotions and thoughts. Love could turn a simple and straightforward piece of wood like Mo Ran into a poet. Chu Wanning likes him. Chu Wanning liked him. He pressed his forehead against the tree trunk, trying to calm down, trying to hold back, trying to cool down, trying to... No, I can't. His closed eyes trembled slightly, his eyelashes were filled with tenderness and ecstasy. The corners of his mouth curled up and the dimple on his cheek became deeper and deeper as the honey in his mouth overflowed. Chu Wanning liked him. He liked him back. It was. It was the person he was infatuated with, the best person in the world, the person he wanted to hold in his arms for the rest of his life, Chu Wanning. It was Chu Wanning. The former Taxian Jun and the current Grand Master Mo of the Cultivation World, was standing in the middle of this rustic white sand, standing against a large tree with it leaves rustling in the wind. His eyes were closed and his head was lowered. His shoulders trembled slightly as he laughed. Because Chu Wanning liked him, the scent of the breeze is sweet, as sweet as the sound of the waves. Chu Wanning liked him. He lowered his eyes and laughed, but as he laughed, he began to cry. He was grinning like a madman as tears were streaming down his face. It was sweet but his heart ached. Chu Wanning. Like him. Ever since they left Kaidi Town, he had been secretly hiding the brocade pouch with their entangled hair. He like him. He suddenly wondered, wanted to know, since when had Chu Wanning been standing behind him, silently accompanying and waiting. 
waiting for him to turn around, waiting for him to reach out his hand, waiting for him to turn around and see. Chu Wanning, how long had he waited? In this life. In the previous life. If there were put together, it should be about 20 years? No, longer than 20 years. He was Mo Weiyu who could see through dust and smoke. He knew that the most priceless object in the world was time. Under his power and influence, he could turn the clouds into rain with a flip of his hand. Precious treasures, beauties and endless flatteries would continuously flow in. Only time, like the passing river could never be chased down and returned. For a person to be willing to exchange 10,000 gold for you, that was lust. A person who is willing to trade a promising future for you, that is love. And a person who is willing to spend 20 years of age, the best years in exchange for you, to wait for you. Without expecting anything in return nor asking for any results. And that's dumb. Really, really stupid. Mo Ran's throat was constricted, bitterness overflowed his tongue, surging up into a tide as he thought. Chu Wanning, you really are stupid. Why is that so? How could this be? How could I, Mo Ran, make you do this? You're the best person in the world, and what about me? His hands were covered in blood and his death was well deserved. Ten thousand people cursed him, wished that he would never be reborn. I bullied you, hated you, let you down, I killed you. You have no idea what I've done. You don't even know. Mo Ran hugged the tree, his sobs falling into the howling sea breeze. What did he do? Under Chu Wanning's gaze, he chased after another person. Under Chu Wanning's dazed gaze, he waited for someone else to turn around. In the illusion at Jinchinch Chi, he said to Chu Wanning, She may. I like you. He used a knife to cut off Chu Wanning's heart. But what about Chu Wanning? He remained silent as a rock. He did not make any move. The knife stabbed into his heart and yet he acted like nothing happened. He just continued to take care of him, forgave him, and accompanied him. Until death. Until death. He laughed and he cried. He was alone in the world. No one could see how he acted like a madman. Chu Wanning for two lifetimes had never let Mo Ran know what he was thinking even to the point of death. He never let him know about his feelings. The humblest thing this proud and resolute person had ever done in his entire life was to fall in love with another person. He did everything he could for that person but in the midst of the long wait, it became clear that there would never be a place for him in the eyes of that person. Knowing that the other person would not like him back, he chose not to disturb him, chose not to alarm him and did not give the other a slightest bit of trouble. Having made the choice, he left the last of his dignity behind. In his previous life at the point of his death, he only said, it was I who wronged you. Be it in life or death, I won't blame you. In this life, he had confessed to him. Chu Wanning was such a good and proud person and yet he said, I'm no good. I've never had anyone like me. Taxi and Jun. Mo Weiyu, what, what have you done? What have you done? Were you blind? Was your mind muddled? How can you not see through it? How can you let him down? Meanwhile, Chu Wanning was lying on the bed, the curtain had already been drawn. He looked at the lights outside through the haze. His face was flushed fiery hot as his heart beat very fast. However, his mind was frozen as his thoughts flowed very slowly. Compared to the person outside who was unable to experience the pure sweetness because of his evil past, Chu Wanning seemed so simple and innocent. He absent-mindedly stretched his five fingers out, spreading them in front of his eyes. When he came to, he found that he had one hand on the back of his other hand and that palm and the back of his other hand were folded, just like how Mo Ran had been holding his hand earlier. When he realized what he had been doing, Chu Wanning was stunned. He then became enraged from embarrassment. He hated himself for being so distracted by that fellow's strength just now. He's so hopeless. 
he viciously released his own hands and slapped his right hand with his left. Creak. The door was suddenly pushed open and the swirling night breeze stirred the bed curtains. Chu Wanning immediately rolled over and closed his eyes as he pretended to be asleep. He heard the man enter the room and walk over to the bed. His tall figure blocked out the faint glow of the candlelight and even through the curtain he could feel the light darken. The shadow of Mo Ran cast itself over the bed, oppressing him and making him breathless. Shizun, are you asleep already? Mo Ran's voice was very soft. For some reason, it carried a hint of hoarseness, as if it was soaked in the bitter salt of the sea. Chu Wanning did not answer. Mo Ran stood in place for a while, then rustled around as if he was afraid of waking Chu Wanning up. He then obediently laid his own beddings out on the floor in the same place as yesterday and blew out the candle flame. In an instant, the room was enveloped in darkness. Due to the absence of the glow from the spiritual butterflies and haytang blossoms that filled the room last night, the darkness that permeated the room was deeper. The kind that was stimulating to the senses and gave an oppressive atmosphere, a darkness that could make one fear what could happen within it or make one expect something would happen within it. However, Moran didn't do anything. This person who had made a name for himself by going to a brothel had suddenly become so muted, cautious, compassionate, and respectful. Then, he lay down, fully clothed. Chu Wanning let out a sigh of relief but feeling a bit depressed at the same time. However, before he could feel ashamed for his melancholy, he heard Mo Ran rise from the floor again. Then, with a slight movement of the curtain, he lifted the curtain off his bed. Chu Wanning's heart leaped to his throat. He dared not move at all. He was still curled up in sleep, trying his best to control his breathing, hoping not to be noticed that he was still awake. He did not know what Mo Ran wanted to do by suddenly getting up. He had never had a cultivation partner before, nor had he broken the precepts concerning such things. The only knowledge he had regarding sex came from those absurd dreams. He was like a man who had never gone into the water before. He was more afraid of the surging waves than he was supposed to be. He would rather find a small pool of water that reached up to his waist first to take a couple of dips. If he was suddenly asked to face the surging current head-on, he was afraid that he would drown in the whirlpool. As such, he was actually very afraid of what Mo Ran would do next. He didn't know if it was because Mo Ran felt his slight trembling or heard his indisputably rapid heartbeat but Mo Ran simply stood quietly for a while, then bent over. As he lowered his body a little, Chu Wanning could almost feel his hot, masculine breath his blazing chest seeming to press down. However, after simply looking at him in this poised for a moment, he smoothed a stray of hair on his temple and tucked it behind his ear. After a rustle of the bedding, he covered him with a warm blanket. Chu Wanning felt a bit more at ease. He felt satisfied, but at the same time, dissatisfied. But from the looks of it, Mo Ran was an honest man after all. The word man was still fresh in his mind, when Mo Ran, the honest man lowered his head again. Chu Wanning only had a moment to feel the warm lips on his cheek before his mind exploded with a roar just like how the splashing icy waves blasted against the rocky shore. Mo Ran's scent lingered around him, scorching him, tormenting him. He kissed him on the cheek. How many people can look at the sleeping face of their beloved and just simply watch with their hands on their sleeves? only covered them with the blanket and just said good night. Mo Ran had exhausted all of his self-control and restraint. The chain was deeply embedded into the flesh of his desire, strangling everything else except for this one indulgence of a gentle kiss. His blood rumbled. Poor Chu Wanning, the Baidu immortal, Yuhang of the night sky. Throughout his life, he was calm and collected, valiant and graceful. However, under Mo Wiyu's warm and low breathing, his face was burning and his palms were sweating. His breath was caught, his heart was beating so fast that it no longer seemed to belong to him. The world seemed so blank, as if nothing was left. A hot fire seemed to have suddenly ignited in his stomach and bright lights interweaved in front of his eyes. 
In the midst of his dizziness, he was barely aware of only one thing. Moran was kissing him. Although it was just on the side of this face. As for the rest, such as how long Moran had been kissing him, he didn't have the energy to think about them anymore. His fingers were tightly clenched under the bed and sweat dripped down his body. His eyelids kept fluttering and trembling uncontrollably. Fortunately, the night was very dark that Moran could not see the rustling of his eyelashes. Fortunately, Chu Wanning's face was too hot and his mind was in a daze that he didn't feel that when Moran was kissing him, a warm tear slid down from Moran's cheek onto his neck. End chapter Dumb Husky and his White Cat Shi Zun Chapter 181 Shi Zun's Memories Chu Wanning woke up early on the morning of the second day after Mo Ran's confession. But he did not get up right away. He looked out quietly through the curtain and found Mo Ran still asleep on a simple camp bed on the floor, close to the edge of the bed. Chu Wanning, who could not see clearly through the curtain so he held back for a moment before he reached out his hand, trying to lift the curtain a little, but before his hand touched the curtain, he replaced it with a finger. Using his fingertips, he lifted the curtain just a little bit. He decided that as long as it was just a little bit, it wouldn't count as peaking. The sun was pouring in through the window paper. A bright red light with a hint of golden glow was cut into narrow silhouettes, shining on Moran's handsome face. It had been such a long time since Chu Wanning last seen his sleeping visage. He quietly observed him now, attentively gazing at the sleeping man for a long time. It was so long ago that he couldn't help but be reminded of the year when Mo Ran had just been brought back to Shisheng Peak by Shui Zheng Yong. A somewhat shy teenager, he could burst out with a brilliant enthusiasm like fire when he was happy and loved to cling to himself when he had nothing better to do than to say that he wanted to follow him as his Shizun. He couldn't chase him away. Upon their first meeting at the sky-reaching pagoda, Chu Wanning insisted that he wouldn't accept him as a disciple because he found that his statement of he looks the gentlest and I like him the best was ridiculous and unbelievable. For the next 14 days, he ignored Mo Weiyu. He learned later on that Mo Weiyu had tried to find a way of how to convince him to take him on as a disciple by asking guidance from Shui Zhenyong, his wife Madame Wang, Shi Mingying, and even Shui Meng. In the end, no one knew who gave him the rotten idea to follow the example of Ching Mun Ligzhu and stand outside the Red Lotus Pavilion and wait for him. In the morning when Chu Wanning went out, he would greet him and beg him to be his Shizun. In the evening when he returned, he would continue to greet him and beg him to be his Shizun. Mo Ran was probably advised that even a dripping water could manage to penetrate a stone. However, Chu Wanning's reaction to this act was, Heh he would ignore him and walked away. He actually didn't like to be pursued with such vehemence. He was a man who being emotionally reticent himself, was willing to deal only with those emotions that were equally placid and mild. Moran didn't know if it was the environment he grew up in, but the young man was a good judge of character and probably sensed Chu Wanning's coldness. He pestered Chu Wanning to be his Shizun for only about two days and then stopped verbally asking him to be his Shizun. Instead, he would continue to come over to Red Lotus Pavilion every day and cleaned up. He would sweep all the dry leaves in front of the courtyard for Chu Wanning. When he saw Chu Wanning coming out, he stood with his broom, scratched his head and called out with a smile, Elder Yu Heng. He would not speak of good wishes in the morning nor would he give polite greetings in the twilight. He would simply utter Elder Yu Heng, and then smiled. Chu Wanning would not even give him a look as he continued to walk past him. The boy would not even get annoyed and simply carried on with his sweeping of the courtyard. Ten days passed peacefully just like this until one morning, Chu Wanning woke up in a very good mood. The night before, the lotus flowers at Red Lotus Pavilion had bloomed overnight and the fragrance of the flowers made him feel good. He pushed open the door and walked out into the winding mountain path. The young Mo Ran was currently walking with his head down. Intently picking his way up the winding path, sweeping the leaves. A single leaf was stuck in the crevice of the rock, 
making it especially difficult to clean it up so he bent over to pick it over and was prepared to throw it among the pile he had swept up. When he looked up, he saw Chu Wanning standing in front of the gate, he froze for a moment and then grinned, his robes were half rolled up leaving his arm exposed. He held up the dead leaf that he hadn't had time to throw away and waved at Chu Wanning. Elder Yu Heng. The sound is clear with the sweetness of fresh fruit. It was obviously not loud, but it seems to reverberate for a long time between the mountain peaks. A white floating cloud flowed away as the sunlight poured down from the sky, penetrating the forest through the leaves as the wind rose among the bamboo forest, shy and sluggish. Chu Wanning stood there for a moment as his pupils turned amber by the sudden brightness of the morning light. He squinted his eyes slightly and for a moment it seemed that the dead leaf in the young man's hands was no longer so dry, but had become as gorgeous and colorful as the smiling young man. He walked quietly down the stone steps. Mo Ran was used to his aloofness and did not take it personally. He simply stood to one side and waited for Chu Wanning to pass. On that day, Chu Wanning walked past him as he always did, descending one step at a time. Then, suddenly, he turned his face slightly sideways and glanced back at the young man, his voice as clear as a spring and as quiet as a lake. He said, Thank you. Mo Ran froze for a moment, then his eyes lit up and he was busy waving his hands and saying, No need, no need. It's what a disciple should do. Chu Wanning said, I have no intention of taking you on as a disciple. However, the tone of voice and demeanor were no longer as resolute as they were at the beginning. Afterwards, he turned around and walked on, but at the end he looked back at Mo Ran for some reason or probably because he could not bear it. When he glanced back at the young man, he saw that he didn't look dejected at all. Instead, he was jumping excitedly in place with his broom, his young face full of vigor and exuding endless light and enthusiasm. It seemed that the boy did not pay heed to his second sentence and was only celebrating on the first one. All he heard was his thank you and he already became so happy. A few more days passed in this way and one day it rained. The rain was not too heavy, Chu Wanning was a person who was too lazy to take out an umbrella or open a rain-repelling barrier. He surmised that it would not take him an incense time to reach the platform of sin and virtue so he shouldn't get soaked by the rain and could simply use the spell to dry himself. He pushed the door out. Mo Ran was still around. However, he wasn't sweeping today, the broom was set aside. He was holding an oil paper umbrella, squatting on the ground with his back to Chu Wanning, concentrating on something, one shoulder shrugging slightly. He was short and when he was squatting like this, he looked even smaller. The umbrella was big and dark brown in color. He made a funny sight, like a mushroom emerging from the spring rain. Chu Wanning stifled a faint smile, walked up behind him, coughed lightly and asked, What are you doing? Ah! The young man looked back at him with a start, tilting his head and said Elder Yu Heng, as a greeting. Before Chu Wanning could even respond, his eyes widened as the boy spoke again, Why don't you have an umbrella? Again, before Chu Wanning could reply, he stood up, got up on his tiptoes as he struggled to raise the oil paper umbrella in his hands to Chu Wanning's height as he said, This is for you. Despite his efforts, he was still too short and he was standing one step below Chu Wanning. He tried very hard, but the umbrella barely covered Chu Wanning's head and he couldn't hold the umbrella into stillness. So, before Chu Wanning could say anything, young Mo Ran was busy saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, in a frenzy. Chu Wanning. After Mo Ran's first sentence, he wanted to say, hmm. After Mo Ran's second sentence, he wanted to answer, no need. After Mo Ran's third sentence, he wanted to reply, keep it to yourself. However, after Mo Ran's fourth sentence which were a series of apologies, Chu Wanning was speechless, his eyes downcast, unable to tell whether his expression was bland or gloomy. Finally, he just sighed and took the umbrella from Mo Ran's hand, placing it squarely over their heads. He lifted his eyes to Mo Ran, 
thought for a moment and circled back to the original statement. What are you doing? Saving the earthworm. Chu Wanning, thinking he had misheard, frowned, and asked, What? Mo Ran smiled, his dimples deep and adorable, and he scratched his head with a little blush, stumbling, I'm trying, trying to save the earthworm. Chu Wanning lowered his eyes and his gaze fell on Mo Ran's dangling hand, which held a branch in its palm, dripping with water that must have been picked up from the ground. Looking further up the stone steps, there is indeed a stupid earthworm lying in a pool of water, slowly wriggling. When the rain stops, these earthworms that ran out from the mud would dry up. Mo Ran was a little embarrassed, so I wanted to get them all back into the grass. Chu Wanning asks lightly, with a branch. Hmm. Seeing the cold look on his face, Mo Ran was worried about being looked down upon by Elder Yu Hang so he said hurriedly, I'm not afraid of using my hands, but when I was a child, mother told me that you can't catch earthworms with your hands, they will rot your skin and flesh. Chu Wanning shook his head, that's not what I'm talking about. He lifted his hands slightly and with the point of his fingertips. After a while a thin, Soft golden willow branch come out of a gap in the long green stone steps, wrapping it around the earthworm lying in the puddle and carrying it back to the nearby grass. Mo Ran's eyes widened in amazement, what is this? Tianwen. What is Tianwen? Chu Wanning gave him a look and said, it's my weapon. Mo Ran became even more surprised as he said, the elder's weapon is so, so, so small. Chu Wanning finished the sentence for him. Mo Ran, he he. Chu Wanning flicked his sleeve and looked indifferent, of course, there are times when it can be fierce. Well, can I see it? It's best not to ever see it. Mo Ran, who had not yet understood what Chu Wanning meant by the statement, turned his head to watch the willow vine poking through the cracks in the stone steps as it gathered all the earthworms that had been soaked in the rainwater and returning them to the wet soil, with a look of envy gradually appearing on his young face. Chu Wanning suddenly asked, Do you want to learn? Mo Ran was stunned for a moment. Then his eyes opened wide in surprise. He was so shocked that he didn't know what to say. In the end, he just nodded his head repeatedly as his handsome face flushed red. Chu Wanning then said, Tomorrow after the morning practice, go to the bamboo grove behind the platform of good and evil. I will wait for you there. After saying those words, his wild silk shoes stepped on the wet stone steps. Holding onto the oil paper umbrella, he walked down the mountains. Mo Ran stared at his back for a long time, then suddenly he realized what Chu Wanning had meant and his face turned even redder. No longer caring about the wet ground, he immediately dropped to his knees and bowed, his still young voice full of eagerness and joy. Yes, Sezun. This time Chu Wanning did not acknowledge him nor did he stop him. He only stood in place for a moment and then continued to walk away, the rain pounding on the surface of the umbrella, one raindrop after another. It was not until his back was gone that Mo Ran rose from the ground and it was only then that he realized that a golden, translucent barrier had opened above his head, flowing with a pattern of five-petaled flowers, shielding him from the fine wind and rain. Chu Wanning remembers that when Shui Zhenyang was informed of his decision, he was both relieved and surprised as he asked him, Yu Heng, what made you agree to take him on? At that time, he was sitting on his designated seat at the platform of sin and virtue, shaking the oil umbrella that Mo Ran had given him in his hand. His slender knuckles were brushing over the old handle of the umbrella as he finally replied, it's because he wants to save the earthworm. Shui Zhenyang let out a cry and his leopard eyes widened like a cat. Save what? Chu Wanning did not reply again, but only lowered his eyes to look at the green bamboo umbrella handle, a little smile gradually appeared in his eyes. In the blink of an eye, so much time has passed. The young man that he took as his disciple was originally a pure and ardent youth, but later went astray for a while. Fortunately, in the end he still grew up to be a proper young master and did not disappoint him. A white fingertip poked out of the curtain and Chu Wanning peeped through the tiny crack, 
staring intently at Moran's sleeping face through the faintest of gap. That youth was now a handsome and tall man. His features were even more distinct than before and there was an air of stability and maturity between his eyebrows. But as always, when Moran slept, his forehead was slightly furrowed, as it had been since he was a child. His eyelashes hung down very low as if they were about to be pressed down by heavy matters and could no longer lift them. Chu Wanning found it amusing. This person was so young, where did all these worries of his came from? As he was thinking of this, he saw Mo Ran's long, curling eyelashes flicker as he slowly opened his eyes. Chu Wanning's fingers immediately stiffened and he tried to pull his hand back and pretend to be asleep. However, Mo Ran was a very strange person. He didn't have the normal attitude that most young people have of waking slowly and sluggishly. Rather, he has the air of older people where upon waking up, they were immediately clear-headed. Furthermore, for some strange reasons, he seemed to have a keen instinct for the slightest change in his sleeping environment, as if he is in constant danger of assassination as he checked his surrounding carefully like he was treading on thin ice. Before Chu Wanning could pull the tip of his finger back through the slip in the corner, Mo Ran's gaze had landed on that exact point of fingertip. Chu Wanning. As the dignity and reputation of Elder Yu Heng were at stake, Chu Wanning had the bright idea of rolling over and sticking his whole hand out of the tent curtain, draping it lazily over the edge of the bed. It would make it appear that the curtain had not been intentionally lifted, but merely that the sleeping man had rolled over, stretched his arms and his fingers inadvertently peeked out of the tent. Mo Ran could not have imagined that the serious and rigid Chu Wanning would come up with such an idea and therefore, was easily fooled. But instead of letting it be, he grabbed Chu Wanning's exposed wrist and carefully placed it back between the beddings. It was only after this had been done that Chu Wanning heard the door creak open. Mo Ran had gone out. Chu Wanning opened his eyes slightly as he looked out the door into the hazy light of the sky and got lost in thought for a long time. Perhaps it was because he had never had the luxury of wishing he and Mo Ran could be together, not even imagining it concretely. So even after what happened the night before, he still felt as if it was all a dream. The impression that he had was that Mo Ran was secretly in love with Shi Ming Jing and that over the years he would stood alone behind them, watching over them. He had seen how Mo Ran would smile brightly at Shi Ming Jing, how Mo Ran cooked noodles for Shi Ming Jing, watched Mo Ran sneakily help Shi Ming Jing with his assignments and looked so happy thinking that no one knows of this. In fact, Chu Wanning was clear on all of this. It was for this reason why he had been envious, jealous, uneasy, and somewhat resentful. He also thought that he had been relieved. It's a fact that it's not that easy to let go. Even if one knew how impossible it was, he would still cling to any possibility and continue to hope. Over the years, Chu Wanning himself has asked himself whether this kind of feudal weight was worth it, whether this kind of obsessive, unrepentant vigil was cheap. However, no matter how many times he asked himself, he couldn't come up with a clear answer. He, Chu Wanning, had also been a heartless man who watched those infatuated men and women with cold eyes. He could not understand why he had to force himself to carry this kind relationship that only hurt him, why he had to keep these feelings in his heart that only wound him, why was he so unwilling to abandon them? Maybe only once his heart had been burned would he finally come to know. This was probably the case for all the friendship and affection in the world. The feelings can be set aside but they could never be abandoned. It was for this reason that Chu Wanning did not understand Mo Ran's true intentions towards Shimei. It was making him somewhat confused and hesitant. He didn't not understand what had caused Mo Ran to shift his gaze from Shi Mingjing's and focus it onto his own slightly troubled face. M.M., was it because of gratitude? Because of guilt? Was he following the example of the female ghost who in order to attain her love, gave her body as payment in return? Damn. Could it be that he was rejected by Shimei? Chu Wanning was stunned by this thought, his mind was racing. The more he thought about things in this angle, the angrier he became. He got up and ruthlessly kicked the camp bed on the floor that Mo Ran made last night. 
End chapter. Dumb Husky and his white cat Shizun. Chapter 182. Shizun's little dragon. Speculation aside, Chu Wanning was reluctant to give it any further thought until he knew more to draw his own conclusions. However, he had some reservations regarding this sudden feeling. Therefore, when the tribulation fire at Lin Yi was finally extinguished and their group was ready to leave the island, Chu Wanning had no intention of riding on Mo Ran's sword anymore. Of course, Elder Yu Heng who barely able to fly at 20 feet, had no intention of stepping on Huaisha across the vast ocean. So, as the group stood at the edge of the rocky beach one by one, Mo Ran pulled up the enlarged longsword while Chu Wanning pulled out his rising dragon talisman. A drop of blood from the tip of his finger was applied to the dragon's scales and the noisy little paper dragon suddenly came to life again. It soared into the sky, somersaulted several times and circled around its master shouting loudly. Aya, Chu Wanning, this venerable one has not seen you for many years and really miss you. What do you want to ask this venerable one to do this time? Take us to the other side of the sea. This venerable one is the dragon of the creation of heaven and earth, the true dragon. How can this venerable one does the work of a mule or a donkey? This venerable one will not carry, no way. In full view of the crowd, the little paper dragon, the size of a hand, wagged its head and squeaked, its body looked weak but its voice was loud. A child could not help but laugh at its words. Chu Wanning's face darkened considerably as he lifted his palm and abruptly ignited a golden flame, saying in a low voice, I will burn you if you don't. The little dragon was so angry that he fell on his back and fell straight onto the beach, baring its fangs and brandishing its claws. It blew its whiskers as he glaringly said, How can you be like this fierce, unreasonable, and shameless? No wonder every time this venerable one sees you, you are always alone despite of how many years it has been. Mo Ran turned around at that and seemed to be about to say something. However, seeing that there were so many people around and Chu Wanning was the type to easily be embarrassed, he changed his mind and kept quiet. He just smiled as he shook his head. However, Chu Wanning was angered as he turned to the dragon and said, You talk too much. With a wave of his palm, the fireball in his palm was flung straight to the little dragon on the ground. Since Chu Wanning didn't really intend to burn it, despite how powerful the fireball seemed, it merely grazed the dragon's whiskers and landed on the beach reef. Where is this venerable one's tail? Where is this venerable one's whiskers? Where is this venerable one's head? Is it still there? If you keep nagging, then it won't be there anymore. Chu Wanning gritted his teeth as hissing golden light gathered again in his palm, grow bigger. Wow, the dragon wailed for a long time. It waved its claw in the air as non-existing tears flew out from its green eyes. Suddenly, it caught a glimpse of Chu Wanning's sharp eyes. It shivered and then the rest of its whimpers ended with a comical hiccup. It slowly rose up from the ground. This time, it really looked like a dragon made of paper. Its body was boneless and its whiskers were hanging down. With another hiccup, it said with grievance, just this once, it won't happen again. As you wish. That's what it said the last time it was mounted anyways. The paper dragon then stretched out its four legs, as if stretching its muscles. Afterwards, it emitted a sharp chirping sound from its throat and a golden light suddenly spilled out of its small, thin body and spread out to its surroundings. The golden light became stronger and stronger and finally engulfed the paper dragon completely. Ho! Huh. All of a sudden, the sharp and tiny sounds of the paper dragon's throw turned into a powerful and terrifying roar. In an instant, the golden light flashed past the purple thunder and lightning. The wind rose up around them and the coast was overwhelmed with waves. Chu Wanning squinted his eyes, his long ponytail and wide robe whipping in the strong wind. When the golden light died down, the crowd looked around and saw that the little dragon had disappeared and the beach was silent, nothing was there. Gee it's gone. A bold child said in surprise, but before the words were completely out of his mouth, he heard a roar from the top of his head. 
the roar shook the heavens, caused the sea to churn in anger and stirred the clouds. The crowd tilted their heads in astonishment and fear. Silence reigned for a few moments until suddenly, a mighty dragon rushed out from behind the thick clouds. Its eyes were wide opened, its claws were strong and just its whiskers alone were as thick as a hundred-year-old tree. It rolled and hovered among the clouds like a tiger or a fierce wind. It abruptly tilted its head upwards and then suddenly dubbed down towards to ground. The wind rises in all directions. Ah! Father! The child who had lost both parents was frightened and still cried out for his father out of habit, Mo Ran picked him up and gently soothed him. Chu Wanning, probably not expecting to scare the child again, was stunned for a moment and when he saw the giant dragon rushing down, he immediately said, slow down. Arg. The huge dragon actually let out a grunt of dull air at the sound of the words, before landing with a thud on the rocky beach and slowly dropping its body. The dragon is so huge that sitting on it is not much different from sitting on land. It's no wonder that Chu Wanning preferred to fly on this dragon instead of a sword. Mo Ran, intent on making Chu Wanning feel more at ease, teased the child in her arms, do you want to join that brother in this venerable dragon? The boy was reluctant and buried his face in Mo Ran's shoulder and whispered, I'll tell you a secret, I don't like him. Mo Ran also said to him, I'll tell you a secret, too. I like him. Ah, the child froze for a moment. But being innocent and naive after all, he asked quietly again, really? SHH, don't tell anyone. The child then immediately laughed, covered his mouth and nodded his head repeatedly. What are you talking about? Aren't you going to leave yet? Chu Wanning did not intend to ride with the crowd. He looked at them briefly and then the venerable dragon took off, rising a hundred feet into the air in an instant and disappeared into the clouds. Due to the fact that Mo Ran could not make the sword fly faster, they didn't arrive in Vuchame town until late in the evening. Chu Wanning who had arrived ahead of them had already met with some of the larger families in the town. Vuchame town is the one nearest to Shisheng Peak and therefore received the greatest support from the sect. Due to this, if a Shisheng Peak elder had requested something of them, they would do their utmost to comply. The victims brought from Lanyi were left in the care of the foremost family in Vuchame town. The child that Mo Ran was carrying waved at him as he left. See you later, Benefactor Giga. Well, I'll see you later. Mo Ran smiled, standing in the sunset glow, watching them walk away. Chu Wanning, tired of this parting scene, stood still for a while and turned to leave. Mo Ran followed him and walked with him back towards the sect. The two of them walked in silence onto the stone steps of the mountain gate, taking one step at a time as the trees swayed with the backdrop of the glorious twilight. Mo Ran remembered how Chu Wanning had once crawled back to the top of the mountain with a severely injured and unconscious man on his back even when his spiritual power was already depleted. Between the bitter and the sweet, he reaches out and gently takes Chu Wanning's fingertips in his hand. Even though they had already held hands once before, Chu Wanning still seemed so stiff, so awkward, so uncomfortable. He tried his best to keep his face calm, to make himself seem bashful and at ease. Unfortunately, the person he was with was Mo Ran. It was Mo Weiyu who knew him so thoroughly and intimately. He even knew the sensitive part of his ear where the mole was or how he loathed how cold the tip of his feet gets. Neither of them wanted to be the first to break the silence but when Mo Ran saw that he did not pull his fingertips away again, he wrapped Chu Wanning's hand in his entire palm. It was a long walk, and he hoped for it to be longer so that he could continue to hold his hand for a long time. At the same time, he hoped that the path was shorter. If it was shorter, then the Chu Wanning who had carried him back then would have suffered a shorter period of time. Just like this, they arrived at the peak of the mountain where the lofty gate of Shisheng Peak could already be clearly seen. Suddenly a tall figure wearing a white silver fox cloak appeared out of the shadows of the trees. Before the two could even see him, they had already heard the man call out. Shizun. 
Chu Wanning was slightly startled and almost immediately wrenched his hand out of Mo Ran's grasp, dangling it between his sleeves, before standing still and looking up. She may walk down the few steps, his face was clear as a lotus flower in the sunset light, bright and vivid like how the brilliant rays of the sun even overshadowed the red haze in the sky. He was really handsome. She may, who probably didn't see the two holding hands earlier, look surprised and smiled, that's great. You're back at last. Moran didn't expect to meet him out of the blue. Feeling awkward, he asked, is she may going out? Well, I was about to go down the mountain to buy some things for the sect leader. I didn't expect to come across Shizun and Aran. A few days ago, sect leader received Shizun's Haitang communication but since he hasn't seen you, he couldn't help but worry. Chu Wanning said, Mo Ran and I are fine. What about everybody else? Nothing is wrong. Shi Mei said, although the young master was manipulated as a black chess piece, he wasn't under the influence of the spell for long and therefore didn't have damage to his heart. Elder Tan Lang has been carefully treating him these past few days and this morning, he had already been able to get off the bed and walked around. Chu Wanning sighed, that's good to hear. Shi Mei smiled and looked at Mo Ran for a moment before dropping his eyes gently and bowing, I would love to talk for a while longer, but if I don't go now to pick up the medicinal ingredients sent by the Gaiyu Ye sect, I would be letting the person who deliver them wait for a long time. I need to go first. Shizun, Aran, I'll see you tonight. Hmm, go ahead. We'll talk more later. She may walk down the road until his figure gradually faded from the view of the two. Chu Wanning turned his head. Although he knew that Mo Ran did not let go of his hand and it was him to had withdrawn first, he felt irritated for some reason. His razor-sharp eyes pointed at Mo Ran with a vicious glare. He then flicked his sleeves and walked forward. Mo Ran. When they arrived outside the loyalty hall, they were promptly shocked by the scene in front of them and turned speechless. Inside the main hall of Shi Sheng Peak, the area was densely packed with gold and silver silk, precious corals, magic tools, and spiritual stones. The space from the high seat at the end all the way to the front were occupied that Chu Wanning could only push open half of the door as the other half was already blocked by a pile of shiny refining crystal that the door could not be moved anymore. Aside from these things and for some odd reasons, there were about 30 anxious beautiful women standing in the hall. They saw the beleaguered Xue Zhenyang who was torn between laughing and crying as he tried to reason with a disciple in a pale red shirt from Huang Pavilion. No, this really won't do. We can't take them. Please take these singers back. We don't really listen to singers here, nor do we like to watch them dance. When Mo Ran followed Chu Wanning inside, the thirty girls were standing by the door and immediately the strong scent of their powder came to his nose. As he was really sensitive to scents, he couldn't help but sneeze four or five times. Xue Zhenyang turned around and was overjoyed to see the two men. Ran Air, Yu Hung. You finally returned. Hurry and help me to persuade this, ah uh, this envoy. Chu Wanning raised his eyebrows slightly. What kind of envoy? Before Xue Zhenyang could reply, the disciple turned back with a smile on his face and said eagerly, I am the eldest disciple of Huang Pavilion and have been ordered by the pavilion master to come and make an alliance with the Shi Sheng Peak. Chu Wanning. The three of them worked together to persuade that man for a long time until they finally managed to send him away. Looking at the envoys departing back, Xue Zhenyang sighed heavily as he wiped the sweat from his forehead. You know, these past few days, there are so many people from the cultivation world, from both large and small sects who have come over to forge an alliance with Shi Sheng Peak. I haven't had many encounters with them over the years and the only ones who were willing to deal with us in the past were Kunlun Taxiu Palace. But now, they all come over to present us with gifts and suddenly very enthusiastic to ally with us. It's very troubling. Chu Wanning frowned at this and asked, what is the situation at Cultivation World these days? Xue Zhenyang sighs in contempt, the river flows east for 30 years and now flows west. What do you mean? 
It's a mess. Xue Zhenyang said. That Su Suanglin is a madman. The memory scrolls he showed revealed so many grudges. I understand that it's his revenge but what did that change? It goes without saying the Rufeng sect was destroyed in such a short amount of time. The Gai Yuye sect and the Kunlun Taxiu Palace had become bitter enemies and the Wuye Bay Temple. At this point, he suddenly remembered that Master Hui Zhui was Chu Wanning's mentor and given their enmities, he immediately stopped talking. Chu Wanning however only plainly continued for him, the Wuyabei Temple was supposed to be a righteous and pure place but the former head monk was involved in the power struggle over the succession of Rufeng sect for sinister reasons so naturally his reputation has been tarnished. Hmm. Xue Zhenyang and Mo Ran both subconsciously looked at Chu Wanning with some confusion when they heard him speak of his own former sect in such an unflinching manner. Chu Wanning pursed his lips and grew quiet. After a while he asked, what about Nangong Si? I don't know, I haven't heard about him and Lord yet. Miss yet, since the tribulation fire went out. Hearing this, Mo Ran couldn't help but let Aloha with a worried expression. Could it be that even after two lifetimes, these two gentlemen were still unable to have a good end? Xue Zhenyang turned his head to look at him. Seeing the strange expression on his face, he asked, What's wrong Ran Air? Mo Ran could not tell the truth and so he said, I was just thinking that Su. Xuanglin's whereabouts have not been determined and the two of them have a deep connection with him, so I'm worried that they might be implicated. Don't worry too much. All the sects have already sent people to thoroughly investigate the source of all the unusual spells in the cultivation world. Xue Zhenyang said. Unless Nangong Su doesn't make any big moves next, he's bound to be caught. Nangong Si and Miss Ye are probably just trapped in a forest or something like that. It may be just inconvenient for them to make contact the outside world for the time being. Mo Ran said, well, let's hope so. They continued to discuss the recent happenings. Although Xue Zhenyang had received the Haitang communication and was aware that Chu Wanning and Mo Ran had stayed in Flying Flower Island with some refugees, he wasn't clear on other details. Thus, he asked them about those matters to which Chu Wanning answered accordingly. However, when the question is something related to Mo Ran, he would pause and would deliberately change the subject. Xue Zhenyang never thought this strange as never in his life would he ever have imagined the change in Chu Wanning and Mo Ran's relationship. This is because these two people could never have been more incompatible with each other except for them being both good looking. Age, identity, personality. Even the color of their skin, their taste on food, their sleeping position, they were the complete opposite in all of these. Throughout these years, Elder Yu Heng had always been lofty and unsullied. The Baidu Immortal is the embodiment of coldness. Grand Master Chu did not long for a companion and was above worldly desires. He cherished his dignity above else so how could he be with his own disciple? Nobody would dare to speculate on this kind of story. If there was a storyteller who could speak of such absurd tale, he would probably spat on with melon seeds, poured on with a large bowl of tea and be beaten with a beechwood table. However, love indeed grew just like that. In the dim lit corner where no one cared to look, a hidden delicate flower had started to bloom. Although it hasn't bloomed fully yet, its fragrance was already very charming. The night that they had returned to Shisheng Peak, Chu Wanning was on his way out to go to Menpo Hall for dinner. Pushing open the door of the Red Lotus Pavilion, he suddenly saw a person standing quietly on the long stone steps along the pathway with bamboo leaves. At the sound of the movement, the man turned his head around. The light shining behind was unrestrainedly painting a golden edge on his handsome face. Mo Ran smiled and said to Chu Wanning, she's on. Chu Wanning's silky white shoes paused as the present suddenly overlapped with his memories of the past. It was as if he was once again back to the first year of Mo Ran's arrival to Shisheng Peak. Every day he would stand by his door just like this as he watched him leave for the day and return for the night. Only now, the young man is no longer a boy and Elder Yu Heng has long since become the Shizun that he called out thousands of times. 
the deference was tempered by a very restrained eagerness and a not so restrained tenderness. What are you doing here? Waiting to have dinner with you. Chu Wanning's eyes fell on the food box he was carrying and said, I want to go to Menpo Hall today. It's been a while since I've been there and I don't want to stay in the pavilion to eat. Mo Ran was slightly stunned, then understanding colored his expression as he smiled, she's unmisunderstood. This food box is empty. I just went to bring some food to Shui Meng. His appetite is not good so I borrowed a small stove and cooked a bowl of noodles for him. He did not expect that Mo Ran would actually cook food for Shui Meng. As far as Chu Wanning could remember, the two men had never gotten along well. Although they were cousins, once they were in the vicinity of one another, it wouldn't take an incense time for them to start to fight each other to death. He could never begin to guess as to what had caused this change. Perhaps five years of slumber were too long and he had missed out on too many things or maybe Mo Ran and Shui Meng had just grown older. In any ways, without their mentors noticing, the relationship between the two of them had improved and became more peaceful. Nowadays, though their relationship are still far from how brothers should be, at least Shui Meng remembered to make an ugly clay figure of Mo Ran and Mo Ran will now cook a bowl of noodles for Shui Meng when he is sick and bring it to his bedroom. Chu Wanning sighed, how is he? He was still sleeping when I went to see him earlier. He's awake now, ate his noodles and wanted to go out for a walk, but I had to persuade him to go back to laying down. Mo Ran said, the Zhenlong chess formation is not like any ordinary spell. A person who had been used as its black piece should rest for a while even if he had not been under its influence for long. Hmm. Chu Wanning responded, but with some misgivings. He suddenly felt vaguely uncomfortable about something it seemed as if Mo Ran was a little too clear, too blasé about the pros and cons of Zhenlong chess formation. She's on. Chu Wanning turned around. Mo Ran smiled at him and asked, what's on your mind? It's nothing. He was probably overthinking things. Mo Ran was a grandmaster now. It shouldn't be surprising that he knew something about the forbidden techniques. He diverted the topic and said, I don't want to go out to eat. I didn't want to go out to eat either. Mo Ran rubbed his nose and laughed low, his voice warm and elegant. Just wanted to be with you and go eat anywhere. Chu Wanning would never admit that he felt move upon hearing that but he couldn't help but look into those dark, warm eyes for a moment longer. Those eyes were warm and bright, reflecting the haze and their own reflections. Simple and clean. He couldn't think of any reason to refuse such a pair of eyes, so he ended up in the bustling dining hall with Mo Ran. Perhaps it's because the thin layer of paper in the window had finally been broken through. In the past, Mo Ran would not hesitate to serve him food and when he saw soup stains on the corner of Chu Wanning's mouth, he would nonchalantly wipe it off with a smile. But now, the two of them had become solemn. Under the gazes of everyone present, they were even bashful as they blushed whenever their gazes locked against the other. At the end of the meal, Chu Wanning rose to put away his tray when Mo Ran called out to him, She's on, wait a minute. What's wrong? Mo Ran reached out his hand and was about to touch Chu Wanning's face, but stopped mid-gesture. He withdrew his hand and pointed at the corner of his mouth. He smiled and said, There is a grain of rice stuck in here. Chu Wanning froze in place for a moment, then put down his tray and wiped the rice grains with his handkerchief as if very calmly, before pursing his lips and whispering, any more. Mo Ran smiled and said, no more, it's clean now. Chu Wanning just picked up his tray again and walked away. He was mortified and embarrassed, but also had a vague sense of loss that he was not so willing to admit. Mo Ran used to lift his hand straight away, and this man's observance of decorum made him feel uncomfortable. And it kept happening for the following days. He was once such an uninhibited man, but now he was like a young boy in the throes of his first love. He was doing his best to treat Chu Wanning with all his effort without doing anything that could be considered as aggressive. Sometimes Chu Wanning could see the burning desire in his eyes, but the man's eyelash curtain would simply fall silently, 
then his broad palm would wrap around Chu Wanning's ten fingers. When he raised his eyes again, the lust in his gaze would be completely concealed by tenderness. However, this much tenderness sometimes gave Chu Wanning a sense of hesitance on Mo Ran's part. It was as if Mo Ran has been dealing with a porcelain figure that has been broken into pieces before and then glued back together bit by bit. It was as if he was afraid that if he moved too much, he will crush the figure into powder. Chu Wanning thought it would be a good idea to take it easy and not move too fast. He can let the excitement reign in his dreams as he was afraid that he would not be able to stand it if it came true. But no matter how much one restrained themselves, no matter how much one wanted to properly follow the course of love, there will always be a limit to it. On this day, after his usual dinner, he took a peach as he prepared to leave the Menpo Hall. The peach had barely been bitten twice when his hand was caught. Chu Wanning was shocked. He raised his gaze and saw that it was Mo Ran. He shouted in a low voice. What are you do dash? End chapter.